to all of the green lovers. Welcome to my channel, One Green Love. And if you are a new subscriber to this channel, go ahead and subscribe to this channel so you green lovers don't miss out on any of my vlogs. For my existing followers, hello. How are you doing? How are your plants? I want to know. Drop those comments down below, you green lovers. Also, I do want to remind every single one of you to turn on that notification bell so you are on alert of whenever I am posting on this channel, One Green Love. I did want to take a moment to reintroduce myself on my channel, One Green Love. I have been noticing that there are new subscribers on my channel, and I want to thank you for finding me and following my journey with my houseplants. I greatly appreciate every single one of you that have subscribed and that is new to my channel. Thank you. My name is Alejandra, and I go by Ale because it is so much easier to say and also just pronounce. I have always had a problem of people pronouncing my name growing up so to make it easier for you you can just call me Ale. Some fun facts about myself is I am 29. I am from RVA Richmond, Virginia and if you are from the USA drop those comments down below. So if you're from another country I want to know drop them below in the comments. Let me hear from you you green lovers. It's very exciting to meet every single one of you to know where you're from. Awesome to know that I have people watching me from all over the world. It amazes me all the time. I do speak a second language and that is Spanish. Yo hablo en español y este es mi canal One Green Love. Gracias por acompañarme en este canal. Y si le gusta este canal, suscríbete para seguir más. I do want to say that I don't mind speaking another language. That is actually my first language. So for those who didn't know, there you go. Now, we are going to be talking about our alocasia polys. Do you own any of these alocasia poly plants? It's been a whole year that I have owned this alocasia poly plant. Pew! I mean, time just just flies, honestly, you green lovers. Like, I just literally remember picking this plant up and boom. <laughs> And now it's like amazing because the fact that I have never owned a bigger plant than my Lucky Bamboo, if you guys have seen some of those videos, I have only owned that big plant for a pretty long time. But last year I decided to want to know more about other plants that I can take care of that could be more intermediate, but less beginner like friendly, if that makes sense. Because I felt like I had so many beginner plants that I just wanted to challenge myself. <laughs> I don't know if you ever feel that way, you green lovers. I kind of feel like I like getting that challenge for my plants to make sure what I'm doing is actually good or if not, fixing it. Because whenever something is wrong, what do we do? We want to fix it, right? So trial and error, you green lovers. If something didn't work right, do it again. Try another way. There's always multiple ways of doing things. Honestly, there's never a right or wrong way of doing certain things with plants. I have noticed that in the plant community. So don't get discouraged. Do you and whatever makes your plant happy, just do it. Just do it for your plant. Because at the end of the day, your plant's going to see you happy and that's all your plant really cares about. Whatever your well-being is, that is an affection and energy that goes to your plant. Okay, you green lovers, you know, take that in consideration with your plants. If you want to watch my last vlogs of what I talked about, my energy and feng shui, go check those out, you green lovers. I'll link those down below in the bio or somewhere up here above <laughs> so you guys can go check that out. But I also will link down when I bought this plant for the first time. I literally want to say it's literally been a whole year because I bought this plant back in 2023. So with that being said, I bought it from a store called Mondays. I do apologize, but this store no longer exists. I literally fell in love with this plant. I think it was because of the fact that one, it was almost the size of my hand. So look at that. I could not, I couldn't get over it <laughs> as, as I am today. I still can't get over it because I have seen pictures on Instagram and you know, on the internet of how big these plants can actually get. It's pretty cool. Because the reason why I chose this plant was because one, it had bigger leaves. Two, the color of this plant was like lime green with like dark forest color, you know, like combined. But with that being said, it was just magnificent to even have in my home because like I said, once again, you green lovers never owned a plant bigger than my lucky bamboo. So it was an accomplishment for myself as a plant mom to have other plants other than that. I do have my fiddle leaf fig tree plant, which is still growing. It's almost equivalent to this plant, honestly, because it's still not as tall as I want it to be, but 
it's still growing, you know, green lovers. So with that being said, you green lovers, I'm gonna need you to go grab that beverage, that snack, whatever you're gonna be munching on and let's get to it with this vlog. Let's start from the beginning. We are gonna be talking about how we take care of our alocasia poly plants. I do wanna mention to you, you green lovers, that this plant has only been with me for only one year. Time just flies by so fast like that. I remember when I first bought this plant literally around this time frame you green lovers. I'm going to link down the video of when I first bought this plant from Mondays at the store. I do apologize, but this store does not exist anymore. So you can find this in your local nursery or any garden stores that you have close by or look it up on the internet, to be honest with you. It's literally been a year. It's wild to me to think that it's only been a year and knowing my ups and downs with this plant has not been easy. Learning about the plant has been going up this roller coaster and now I'm kind of just hanging on and we're about to go down because it's springtime and you know what springtime means more blooms yes with that being said you green lovers i got this plant back in 2023 i do want to say that i've never owned a plant bigger than my beetle big tree which is still growing honestly it still is but it's not like super tall or super advanced but i would say it's almost close enough to my alocasia poly if my alocasia poly were to be taller like a tree then i would see some sort of difference difference. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is I'm comparing the two. Those are my two biggest plants. Before having this alocasia poly plant, I never had any leaves that were this big. No, I only had one plant that was like big as my face. You know, it's nowhere compared to this particular plant, honestly. Now let's talk about the sunlight. With the sunlight for this particular plant, it honestly just loves the indirect sunlight being direct in the sunlight. I know this sounds pretty confusing. To make it not so complicated for you green lovers is basically Basically, if you guys see how I place my plants, it's kind of close to my window here. I do get good lighting now that the time has changed. All the light that I get, it gets beamed on in the morning for a good like three to four hours, I'm gonna say. But now that the sun actually stays longer with us, it stays for about six hours or so. So right now, as you guys can see, it is the evening time here on the East Coast. I noticed that when I first bought this plant because of me not knowing the sunlight of how much she should get. I actually had like a couple of my leaves kind of burn. <laughs> But hey, I was still learning and didn't know what was going on. Then I started to water less in the summertime and kind of cut back and kind of did like a little schedule to figure out what was going to work and what wasn't going to work for this particular plant. And finally, once I had my watering done over a schedule that I have in my book of plant that I keep track of, and I just kind of went with that method. And now that it is about to be springtime or pretty much we're in springtime, I have been noticing slowly that that uh, she is coming back alive. The next topic we're gonna do is watering. How much water do I give this plant? I'm gonna tell you, green lovers, I struggled so much in the beginning for like, I'm gonna say six months. I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> because the watering with this plant was kind of like, I either watered it too much or I didn't water enough. When I said I set that schedule up for myself, I kind of did it different from like the spring and the winter times. I noticed that in the winter time, it slowed down so much on the watering aspect so I would say let's say I water my plant on Saturday I probably wouldn't water it until I literally knew that the soil was completely dry it would go like two weeks and I would not water this plant and it was still growing and thriving and everything so now that it's about to be the springtime I'm definitely going to keep my eye on it because I don't want to underwater or overwater this plant now they do love a lot of humidity because of where they come from they originate from Asia which where this plant is locally from they live love the humidity i mean it's like the humidity up to like between they have mentioned between 64 to 86 is the range of what they like these plants to be so i don't blame the plant i have noticed a difference between when my plant didn't have the humidity around and now that it does i will tell you one thing that when it didn't there was no reaction to this plant but once the humidity started to roam closely around this plant and i started moving her around closer to closer to my humidifiers that i have in my home she started to perk up 
and I started to notice a difference and I noticed that she was happy. Next we're gonna talk about is dormancy. This is something that's not really talked about with this plant, but I have been doing a lot of mad research because this was, like I said, my first year having this plant. That being said, I noticed that, you remember how I said the watering slowed down? Well, also that entitled with the dormancy. Basically what happens is I think I lost like a good six, seven leaves over the last maybe four to five months during the winter months because I didn't know what was going on. Now it's totally normal. It's totally okay. It doesn't mean that your plant's completely dead or anything like that, you green lovers. It just means that they're gonna go just like give her a little bit of space, give her a little bit of credit. I mean, try to set aside like a schedule of when you do check up on this plant. I'm gonna tell you right now, she is so dramatic and plays dead. Doesn't move, doesn't do anything. You won't see a leaf, but what you'll see is maybe a dead leaf falling apart or like that is a dormancy. It's okay if your leaves do fall off during the winter months. It's totally okay. They will grow back again. And also do remember to fertilize your plants in the winter time too. Even though you may not see any blooms or any growth at the time, still do it. Don't cut back <laughs> at all in the winter time. They still need some nutrition to keep on flourishing and to keep on thriving. Another cool aspect about these plants are the fact that their leaves, I'm gonna show you the leaf, how it will get purple uh, behind these leaves, which is pretty cool and pretty amazing to be honest with you. I've never had my other plants on the back of their leaves have a different color than the front. So having this plant is kind of more different than my other indoor plants because it has more characteristics to it. I really like that about this plant. I can't blame the fact that you have one side dark green and then the other side purple. What the heck? <laughs> pretty cool if you ask me. Lastly, I'd like to leave off with this side note that I have learned last year was that this plant really gave me a lot of uh, pests uh, when I did get this plant along with my calathea because I got my calathea and my alocasia poly around the same time as well. And plant parents, I just have one tip for you. Make sure you use product to eliminate pests before they enter your home. I only say that because I have learned from my experience when I bought these plants, they didn't have those nutritions. What ended up happening in my household was that I ended up having a lot of gnats. Now, as a plant mom, I totally freaked out and said, what the heck is going on with my house plants? First time ever, totally just lost it and didn't even know where to start, where to begin, how to do it. So I am letting you know, you green lovers, before you buy that plant, first, set it to the side. Secondly, don't have it connecting with all of your other indoor plants separate them give it about a week or so and also like i said use a product where it's able to kill those gnats because i kid you not my summer last year was crazy <laughs> I was like bah, bah, <laughs> fighting these things because like who wants them on their plant? I don't. I am giving you that big advice and big tip coming from me as a plant mom. Do your plant a, a favor because it's definitely going to help out in the long run and your plant is going to appreciate the love that you have given it. Just a tip, you green lovers. I do want to end the vlog here. I do want to let you green lovers know thank you so much for watching my vlog today. I hope you guys enjoyed my tips and tricks about my alocasia poly plants on how to take care of it. If you have any questions, recommendations, drop those comments down below, green lovers. I definitely want to hear from you, green lovers, new, existing, uncoming subscribers, all of you green lovers, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful people. I greatly thank you. And thank you once again for watching my channel, One Green Love. XOXO, bye.